All right. My great friend David Bonson says the real reason Silicon Valley Bank collapsed is because of a Fed-driven world of zero interest rates, which enabled the troubled bank's dangerous business model. He joins us now to talk about it. David Bonson, managing partner in the Bonson Group, author of the book, There's No Free Lunch. We have your National Review article up there. I mean, uh, I would say their asset liability management at this bank was kind of lacking. Uh, everything was upside down, uh, including how they ran it. So this is like the first, I don't know, this isn't insolvencies, at least not yet. It looks like this is a liquidity-driven bank collapse. Is that what you're driving at, David Bonson? Yeah, it's sort of like a comedy of errors, except for it isn't funny, right? You, you, the asset liability mismatch you refer to only became relevant because their depositor base was so vulnerable. How did they possibly have this explosion of assets, of deposits into the bank, which represent liabilities to the bank, right? It's an asset of somebody else. These companies, these depositors, it's their cash, and that's money that has to be paid back by the bank on demand. How did it get so mismatched? Why were they buying long-dated government bonds? There was a complete moral hazard that they believed that they were safe to go reach out further on the yield curve relative to the absolutely no interest they are making in a zero-bound Fed. But more than that, Larry, the point I'm making in the article is the whole reason Silicon Valley had this explosion, the venture capital had this explosion, the crypto nonsense, all of these SPACs and non-profitable IPOs, which is basically where this deposit base came from, was a result of the Fed staying too low, mm. too long. Absolutely right. No, no, totally right. Um, David, does anybody have any idea? what the bank was paying for on these deposits like was it five percent six percent seven percent you know they're buying let's say just for argument's sake ten-year notes which are yielding four percent or now they're down to three and a half percent what these deposit cost the bank do you have any idea does anyone know that yet yeah it's um it's less than one percent their their deposit that was carry cost was nothing the reason their depositors were with them was not because they were getting an attractive short-term interest rate. It's because this bank was then a partner with a lot of their VC activity. They were taking warrants, equity pref. I mean, they had all kinds of sort of junky equity positions, and they were just sort of a friendly bank in the Silicon Valley. But remember, you had said 4% on the 10-year. That's what the 10-year has been lately. When they were buying these long-dated mortgage bonds, they had an average yield of 2.1%. Mm. They went way out the curve to capture 2%. Their net interest margin couldn't have been 1, 1.5% soaking wet. And they didn't hedge. The duration of their book was no different, hedged or unhedged. Mm. So I don't know if that's a Dodd-Frank thing where they weren't getting tier one capital credit for their derivatives, the interest rate swaps. But who in the world left that interest rate risk unhedged? It's beyond me. David, last one. Um, the stock market was basically flat today. It was you know, up and down, up and down. The regional banks got hit very hard. Um, I know this is a difficult question, but the question of contagion is very much with us. All right. Um, I was looking for clues today. I was unsettled by the bad performance of the regionals. Overall, the market was flat. What do you think? It just, it just what's your instinct tell you? Um, I wish I could trust my instinct. I trust my research a little bit more. I'm with you. I think it's very peculiar that some of the big regionals got hit so hard with that backstop that they put in place. You would think that would have soaked up the issue. And so I expect you're going to see a big announcement this week mm. from a major player, either a Wall Street firm or a large commercial bank acquiring one of the big regionals. Mm. Uh, but in the meantime, it doesn't make a lot of sense that you can get dollar for dollar liquidity from this facility for posting collateral of long dated bonds that we assume are underwater mark to market. Right. If you're going to get dollar for dollar credit on that, what really should be the solvency issue? I have a feeling it has more to do with people believing 
that uh, there's just been damage done to the reputation of small and regional banks, mm. and then they're just moving deposits over to the big four. Mm. And uh, again, Dodd-Frank has always right. been the gift that keeps on giving for big banks. Yeah, big banks get more powerful. I don't know. It's very right. difficult. I hate to see this. SVP. Regulation is a subsidy, Larry. Regulation is a subsidy to the big and powerful. Well, that is true. But, you know, in the case of this Silicon Valley bag, I got to tell you, and I don't know, you know, this is not my thing. I don't know much about it. But their mismanagement, all right, the whole market, the duration oh. story is upside down. They should have seen it coming. Everybody saw it coming. Yeah. They didn't hedge it. You're quite right. I hate to see it go down because I like regional banks, okay? And they are part of the so-called uh, Silicon Valley tech ecosystem. I don't want to damage that either. I mean, I just kind of hate to see it, but it happened. Anyway, more to be revealed. Dave Bonson, National Review. Thanks a million. Appreciate it.